Hi, welcome to Sorting Myself Out. My name is Ryan Holzhappel. Today, my co-host and I, Mercury Black, take a look at time management and subpersonalities with an audience member named Nolan. We really enjoyed speaking with Nolan, and it's been about his third or fourth time talking to us on the channel. We always enjoy having him on, and we're glad that he's continuing to follow up with us about his personal growth and development. I need to set up a few things beforehand so you understand what's going on here. First of all, if you're new to the channel, we talk about a lot of different things here. We talk about personal growth and development, philosophy, psychology, but generally you can count on one thing. It's always going to pertain to something that's about the individual and how they can apply lessons to their life in a practical and soulful manner. So no matter how far afield we go in different directions, you can always count on that one thing remaining true. It's about coming back to the center, the core, and becoming who you truly are. In this video, you need to understand a few things. First of all, you need to understand the premise of what a subpersonality is and why it's worth pursuing in the gestalt basis, the self-soul-spirit basis trained by Roger Strachan that we use here. A subpersonality is a part of you. It is a component of the diverse psychic fragments of who we are. We are all made up of multiple personalities. If you want to know more about this or understand exactly why this is valuable and true on both a scientific and a phenomenological basis, check out the playlist and the videos in the description. What's important to know here also is that there are times where it can feel a little awkward to start practicing this methodology with the subpersonalities. And a lot of defenses come up because people sometimes, not all people, sometimes people tend to feel uncomfortable. The reason they feel uncomfortable is because there is a real authenticity about owning the fact that you're not all one thing. And, oh, this part of me feels this way. And, oh, from this part of me, I feel this way. And there's a way in which certain subpersonalities feel like this is forced or contrived or not cool. Um, and a lot of times what that is, is it's a measure of protection from the vulnerability. Now, I don't speak for everyone here. I'm just talking about a common occurrence within this work. So notice within yourself as we start to dive in to the work here, what parts of you come up? And maybe you won't have that response. Maybe your response will be excitement, joy, exuberance, etc. But really notice whatever your response is because that will say a lot about your particularly your particular subset of personalities. So that's really important to to get out of the way right here so that you understand what's happening as we move through this. Now, second, you have to understand Gestalt. Again, this particular use of Gestalt is called Self-Soul-Spirit. It was created by Dr. Roger Strachan, who is a genetic psychologist. Now, why do we use the Gestalt model with subpersonalities? Gestalt is a therapeutic technique and philosophy that is based on bringing something into the here and now. Gestalt is about acting out the actualities of life in the present moment. It's not about talking about concepts or talk therapy where you're talking about a feeling or you're talking about a story. No. In Gestalt, you be in it. You actually put on the hat of the different parts of who you are and you interact with them on a psychodramatic basis. That's really important. Why do we do that? Why is that effective? Because the brain and the consciousness acts with this process in a way that makes it hyper real and helps integrate new lessons, teachings, and teachings and realizations in a way that would never be possible on a simple conceptual basis where you're just talking about something. In Gestalt, it's very essential that you don't just talk about, oh, this subpersonality feels upset or this subpersonality feels excited. No, I am this subpersonality. I feel excited. And you have that dialectical conversation. And what that does within your mind, body, and soul is it makes everything. It maps everything onto a landscape of your actual life. And so you're practicing in real time. It's on-the-job training. It's much easier at that point for the brain to integrate new lessons and build on new neural pathways so that you can carry out these realizations more efficiently in your life. 
So that's part of the reason why we do that. The consciousness is programming and training the brain for the new development of parts and how they want to manifest in the world with the direction of a deeper purpose. That's essential. I think that you will really get a lot out of this video. Pay attention closely to the body language. Pay attention to the shift between parts, the exercises that we create to help Nolan get on fire with his schedule and his time management and feel integrated with who he is. Hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, and also consider donating. Those are the things you can do to support Sorting Myself Out. We put a lot of effort in here and anything that you do makes a huge difference. We are very grateful for your listening and your watching of our videos and we really have so much love for this community and we hope everyone's staying safe and calm out there. All right, enjoy. Coming through good? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah. How you been, Nolan? Uh, pretty good. Some, some difficult stuff. Mostly just uh, with my health and not feeling that great all the time. Mm hmm got a lot to do with like just kind of my backrest and physician eating and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and like also some some more difficulty breathing that seems to be related to how I'm sitting and whatnot that's been so like quite difficult to deal with at times wow i guess mostly what's been difficult is not always feeling like um like more difficulty being productive i guess or feeling able to do the things that i want to do um with the same ease that I was doing it before. Wow. So it's, it's been kind of up and down for a while. And recently I've been trying to um, build up a little more like productivity and good habits, but by starting kind of small and trying to not I mean it's about trying to find that balance between pushing yourself but also not um, being like unforgiving with yourself trying to understand that it's okay if I don't do all this stuff that I set out to do but it's not okay to like not do anything or not try or mm. give yourself a pass, I guess. But it's difficult finding the right balance between those between those extremes, I guess, or opposites. And I'm wondering which way is it that you're finding um that you're going too far. So for instance, is your problem that you feel like uh, you're allowing yourself to use your condition as an excuse and you're really not trying as hard as you could? Or are you finding that your condition's bad enough that even though you're trying, you're not accomplishing much and you're being too hard on yourself? Um. I would say it could be both at times, but I think more often it's probably been um, um, using my condition too much as an, uh, an excuse. I would say I lean more in that direction. And, But all I, yeah, it seems to kind of oscillate where 
I'll go for a while of not doing probably as much as I could be doing to, okay, now I'm going to do all these things, and then I can push myself too much at one time, and then afterwards feel, like, tired, or like, wow, I really did a lot, probably too much, and then kind of going back into the other mode of, well, now I don't want to do anything for a while, so... I'd say that seems to be the pattern. I think it's great that you notice that pattern. So one thing that might feed into that pattern is after you've put out a lot, like too much energy in something and you collapse into inactivity, if you allow too much guilt to build up while you're inactive, like if you're genuinely overtired over sore, emotionally imbalanced from putting out too much, any of that, and you allow the guilt to build up too much, then as soon as you feel able, able to make a small step, you just push as hard as you can to, to make up for that guilt. Then you can push too hard and just crash again. So if it's something like that, um, you could just try observing what happens if the next time I try, I'm very careful not to push myself too hard. Maybe I won't get as much done today, but like Peterson says, it's about finding what is actually sustainable for you long-term. Yeah. I think that's kind of, well, I would notice, say, uh, if I was gonna read, I don't know, Maybe say, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to read a chapter of this book or something. Then I would find myself being like, okay, I read the chapter. Maybe I should read two now. Or read another one. And then I notice, I guess, now there's some personality saying, like, you just said one chapter, and now you want to do another one. Like, Kind of like, um, I guess, making deals and then not, um, not living up to them, I guess. So, um, I don't know if you could, there might be a part of me that also uses that against myself in the sense that, um, that, Maybe there's another part of me that uses the, oh, you're not, you're breaking the bargain. I'm trying to word this right, I'm just losing track, but the idea of another part of me kind of using the idea of breaking the bargain as a way for, um, it to get out of doing perhaps the work that it could be doing. Maybe the like procrastinator in me um, places a lot of emphasis on, oh, you don't want to break your deal with this um, other part of yourself because then you're going to end up pushing yourself too hard and then you're not going to want to do anything for a while. So it seems like there's a, a weird thing that goes on with this kind of, uh, these deals that I make between my sub-personalities. Mm -hmm. Where it's not always, where there might be some hidden motives that I don't always notice from some of the other sub-personalities are uh, getting involved, I guess. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, Nolan. One of the things that I'm noticing in hearing you speak is that there is a should. I should be more productive. So you, you have an assumption about how you should be acting that's coming from a part of you. And you're 
acting as if that is the most important voice in your system. Now it might be, you have to decide from a deep place of meaning and connection if that is really true for you or if that's just a part of you telling you how you should or shouldn't be when that actually might not be the case for you. So that's one thing to analyze, assess your assumption about what you should and shouldn't do. Then look at, examine the conflict. One part of me wants to be more productive. Another part of me wants what? It's not that it doesn't, it's not what it doesn't want that's important, right? Obviously it doesn't want to be productive because that's getting in the way of what it does want. So examine what does it want? What do you think it wants? Does it want to relax? Does it want to play? Does it want to uh, be lazy? What is it looking for? I might just take a look at some of my personalities here. Yes. So I have them kind of written out, but. Well, I think there's one part of me that I kind of call him the old man. Okay. And he's kind of like that, I don't know, bit of that stereotypical kind of get off my lawn kind of person. And he kind of, it's not that he's lazy exactly but it's that he can get resentful and kind of grumpy easily. And so if, if he had it his way, what would your life be like? Well, I think he kind of, there's an element of like self-pity that he has. Okay. The thing that makes him feel better at times is channeling that self-pity into outward like grumpiness or resentful or kind of directing um, his self-pity at other people. Got it. And that, that, that really resonates with what you've shared with us before on this channel. Uh, when you really started sorting yourself out, you realized that you didn't want to be resentful anymore. And you shared that with us almost a year ago. So that's beautiful that you've, you've come this far to now be aware of what part of you that is. So as the old man, if, if you had it your way, you would, you would just be resentful and grumpy and, you know, taking it out on others. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, are there any other parts of you that are wanting, wanting uh, things other than productivity in this situation? Actually, can I just ask one quick thing about the old man before we move on? Sure. Um, so everything about the old man's subpersonality was framed in a somewhat negative fashion. There. And I just wanted to know from a pause, like for instance, the old man is lazy. Is the old man lazy or does the old man have a unique ability to appreciate um, moments of calm? And I'm just wondering, aside from all the things the old man doesn't like, what does the old man like? Like, is there something that creates positive feeling in that subpersonality? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. It might, it might not have, it might not be a personality that has positive feelings. That could be the case as well. Yeah, I would say probably it leads in that direction. Okay. Great question, Mark. I like, I'm glad we clarified that. There could be some positivity there, but not that I know of right now. Okay. So what other parts of you are involved in this situation? We have the productive part and then we have, are there any other parts that are 
upset with the productivity. Well, there's... I guess there's a pr procrastinator. It's another one that I have. Um, Great. And Nolan, do, do me a favor because this, this, this is where this gets more powerful. When you go into a part, speak as if you are that part. And, and just get a little weird with it. So I am the procrastinator and what I want is... I'm the procrastinator and I don't like to be overwhelmed with work. I like to take lots of breaks and um, I don't like when the productive parts um, get angry or frustrated with my desire to relax and do right. things. Perfect. And also I'd assume that you don't like when they, when you don't like it when they're working cause you want to be relaxing. Yeah. Now here's the next piece of this. Quit. We could define that as a procrastinator. If we define it as a procrastinator, we're still looking at it in relationship to the value hierarchy of productivity, meaning you're defining it against a, uh, another value, okay? So it's procrastinating relative to productivity. However, what I'd encourage you to do is look at it from a proactive sense. What does it proactively want? Well, you just said it wants to relax. So you might consider renaming it the relaxer. It's up to you. You got to consider that. Now, if it was just a sabotage, a self-sabotage part that just wanted to beat you up or be resentful, potentially like the old man, um, I would, I would say, uh, leave, leave it as the procrastinator. However, because you shared with us that there is a deep sense of wanting to relax, then it makes me think that it's not that it just doesn't want to work. It's that it really uh, has a different agenda for life. Does that make sense, Nolan? Yeah. Also, procrast sorry, the the restful time doesn't need to be framed as procrastination because procrastination is something that works against the work schedule. However, a proper work schedule involves rest. Like look at even a bodybuilder. It's not about lifting weights all the time. It's about lifting weights and then resting the muscles properly so they can recover and move forward. And it's the same thing with a weekly work schedule. You don't try to do your 40 hours of work all at once. You do an eight hour day, you go home, you have to rest, you have to take care of yourself, eat, and you have to sleep. So we all need rest to prepare for the next work cycle. And perhaps framed as the rester, it could be seen as a productive part of the community helping everybody on this long-term cycle of work and rest. Yes, exactly. That's, that's the power of, of looking at the parts from what they do do rather than what they don't do. So, so, so we know this so far, Nolan. We have the old man who's pissed off and resentful and bitter towards life. We have the relaxer, if, if you don't mind us calling it that for the time being. And then we have the, who is it? Is it the worker? What do you call the other one? Well, there could be a few. Um, I, should I maybe just share my screen here? Sure. Because I kind of have a map. I don't know if it's. That'd be great. Right, but I worked on it for a while, so. A second here. Let's 
sir. Do you see that? Beautiful, Nolan. Great work. Awesome. Can you scroll down a little bit so I can see some of the descriptions? I don't need to read all of them. I just want to take a quick look. Great work. Good job saying I. The only one you didn't say I with is the philosopher. You said he. So go back and change that one when you get a chance. Um, great work. Okay, so you have a few. You have a few productive parts. Yeah. Uh, where's your poet? Oh, there, there he is. There he is. Beautiful. Great. I love this. You did a fantastic job, Nolan. Okay, so we've got the learner, the engineer, the, you know, the hermit probably, probably likes hanging out with the old man because they can hide. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Relaxer, there he is. Okay, here's part, part of your assignment after this call if you if you want to take it is to redefine the relaxer in a more proactive way i'll give you an example from my lazy i call him my lazy bear i'm the lazy bear and i love to relax i love to hang out i love to move slow i love to have fun i like to float down life like i'm floating down a river and i, I like to have no worries and just look up at the sky and bathe in the sunshine that's what i like yeah. now imagine one just one more thing there merc imagine if i came in from the workhorse and i said to the lazy bear you're a procrastinator you all you are good for is getting in the way of work that's all you do that's all that you bring to us now all of a sudden i'm operating under a definition of my parts that is based on one part rather than the whole mandala. Do you see the issue that that creates? Yeah. Now, the trick is when you resolve that conflict by allowing them both to exist, the soul or the deeper, the deeper aspect of who you are can decide when the relaxer gets time and when the worker gets time and they can make a compromise. So that way you're not wasting energy in this tense experience you're, you're actually efficiently using your energy. When you work, you're in sync. When you're relaxing, you're in sync, and it resolves the conflict. So you don't have to feel guilty when you're relaxing, and you don't have to feel like you want to relax every time you're working. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Um, I feel like sometimes I'm not kind of related. I'm stuck in this kind of feeling of, I guess, indecision of not knowing what to do with my time sometimes where it's like, I could do this or I could do that or I could do this. And I'll have like three or four different things that I'm kind of thinking about. And I'm not sure which one to go with. Yes. And so let's, let's, Merck, I know you have something to say. So do you want to say it first? Because I want to do a little experiment with Nolan after that. Uh, I for Oh, no, I don't forget. Uh, I was just going to throw in really quickly that, uh, like with Ryan, I've talked to him both when the workhorse is in charge and when the lazy bear is running his mouth. And uh, the workhorse is great to talk to if we're trying to get something done. But on the other hand, the lazy bear is just fantastic to talk to so chill so calm and like a lot of people might look at ryan's whole set of personalities and think that the lazy bear only has value to him allowing him to rest but the lazy bear is a very chill guy to hang out with thanks bro that's awesome um so here's the exercise nolan what does the rest of your day look like do you, you decide are you deciding what you want to do today still uh, yeah i don't really have much okay plan. perfect so let's i want go through all the parts of you that want a piece of your time today 
and I want you to say, I'm the philosopher and this is what I want to do. I'm the poet and this is what I want to do. Let them all speak. Um, only the ones that are loud. You don't have to go through every part, but the ones that particularly feel like inside your body and your mind that they want something to do today. And, and Mercury and I want to hear each one of those speaking from themselves. And then I'll give you the next piece of the exercise. I, the philosopher, would like to spend time reading. I've started a new book uh, on the Stoics, and I would like to read that today. Fantastic. My philosopher so says that sounds really nice. Yeah. So I guess I, as the relaxer, would like to catch up on some YouTube videos that I've saved to watch later. Fantastic. I, as I, the poet, would like to write, um, would like to spend time writing today. About it, and then I guess I, as the manager, would like to spend time crafting some type of schedule to help me be productive in the upcoming days. Great. And I would say that's about it, but I can- Perfect. Now. Perfect. Okay, so now we know the different directions. The philosopher wants to read, the poet wants to write, the relaxer wants to watch YouTube. The manager wants to set the schedule. Did I miss one? I feel like I'm missing one. I think that was all the Okay, great. So we have we have those different parts that all want to do their own thing. So the first thing is, wow, that's fucking cool. Like you have this these multiple creative urges within yourself going in multiple directions. Now the question is, how do I sort that out? How do I how do I manifest in, in a certain direction so I'm not in conflict? So this is where you negotiate time. And you can do that using your soul. You can do that talking between the parts where you decide, do you give them each a little time? Does one part get more time than all the others? Um, so go to your soul. Uh, if you need to close your eyes, you can. If you want to keep them open, you can. And, and listen to what all the parts just told you. And how do you know when you're in your soul? You know that you're in your soul when you're in a sense of presence, quiet, mindfulness, and listening. And you don't have a, you don't have a big, um, you don't, you're not favoring one part over another. You're really grounded and, you're able to direct things from a, a leadership standpoint. So as the soul, once you feel like you're in it, the first step is to acknowledge the parts. And, I'll, and I'm going to model this for you so you, have, so you have something to go off. I am the soul, and I just want to say, wow, you guys have so much energy, and I'm so appreciative of the manifestations and the beauty you bring to my life. And I hear each one of you. I hear the poet, I hear the philosopher, I hear the manager, um, and I'm slipping the other one. And I hear all the parts. And as a soul, this is how I want us to direct our energy. And you make a choice. And then you let the parts respond. So let's start with the first part. Go to the soul and do that. Um, this is one more thing I want to add here. Sure. Um, 
I'd say it's probably the conversationalist. But I, as the conversationalist, would like to spend time um, writing a blog post and getting that done soon. Great. Great. Good. Okay. So what was the next part you wanted to do? From your soul, acknowledge the parts and honor what you heard from them. And then start directing how your day is going to go and which parts you're going to feed, which parts you're going to negotiate with, stuff like that. Sure. So I, as the soul, would like to acknowledge all the parts of me that are enthusiastic about wanting to get their various things done today. Uh, the conversationalist who wants to work on his blog posts the poet who would like to get some writing done today, the philosopher who would like to continue reading about the Stoics, and the manager who would like to craft a schedule for the upcoming days. I acknowledge all of you. Great. And I'm happy that you're part of me. Oh, that's sweet. I would like to give some time to the conversationalist to work on his blog post because it's something he's want to he's wanted to get done for a long time. Great. I'd li also like to give the philosopher some time to read. Great. And I'd like to give some time to the manager to spend a few minutes planning um, a schedule. Great. And finally, I'd like to give the poet even just a short time to spend writing because I know he can do a lot in even a few minutes. Okay. Good. So how does that feel? Does that, does that feel, I want to talk to your manager. Um, manager, does that feel realistic? We're talking about you've got the rest of the afternoon and the evening. Do you think you can get all that done that the soul's asking you to do? Yes, I think I could do that. Can you help the philosopher and the poet um, have time as well as you? Yeah, I could manage that. But... Perfect. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, ch I gotta talk to the plumber. I'll be right back. Go ahead and keep talking with me. Sure. Okay, so now that we've done that work, how are you feeling about, um, like you said before, that sometimes you find your problem is you've got some time and you just don't know what to do with it. Did that exercise with Ryan put that into a different perspective for you, or do you have more to ask about that? Well, I, I think that helped to kind of understand which part of me or which parts of me are kind of interested in doing each thing so that it's kind of, I guess I know where each of these desires is coming from. So that helps me kind of sort it out in my head a little bit. Where it's, okay seems less, um, I guess, less kind of chaotic. 
Okay, great. And something, I guess, who do I want to say this to? I guess I want to say this to the manager. Um, so then this sort of isn't parts work, but it's kind of like, yeah, just advice to this one part. So when Nolan finds himself, like as the gestalt, not knowing what to do with his time, definitely like, do everything that Ryan just said. And then in addition to that, take stock of where you are now. So one thing that the manager can do is first take a look at Nolan. Is he okay? If he's overtired, if he needs to eat, if he's not feeling well, then you know you should manage time to take care of him. On the other hand, if you look at, you know, you take the self-evaluation and say, yeah, I'm rested, I'm fine, I'm ready to be productive. The other thing to also look for is, um, is to look around your environment at the time. How are you set up? So is there anything most urgent? Or also just, you know, there's a time to plant and a time to do weeding and a time to reap the harvest. Just as the manager, once you've taken stock of yourself, then also take a look at the environment and see if you notice, hey, this is planting season, let's work on this. Or, hey, this is such and such. Yeah. So just trying to process what you said here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what to say in response, but yeah, I agree with what you were saying. And I forget which philosopher it was who said it, but something like, well, just something that as soon as your thoughts turn bad, like if, if you've been doing well all day with something and then suddenly it's like everything seems pointless and it seems like you're just fucking up, then check and see if you're hungry or check and see if you're tired. And if either of those are true, eat or get some sleep before you do anything. So one is to just always take a self-evaluation then the other is to evaluate the scenario because you might find that when you evaluate the scenario, um, I don't know, maybe it's that you saw on the sorting myself out discord that someone had a support request up saying they're really struggling. They need to talk to somebody. Then you might notice, Hey, this is the moment that the conversationalist could be active. You know, I'm going to send them a message or, but you get what I mean? Just to take a look if there's any particular opportunity at the moment. On the other hand, if it's just an average day and all the things you could be doing are, you know, there's no particular thing about the moment, then that's fine. You're back at square one. But sometimes the moment will tell you what to do just because there's a particular opportunity or a particular restriction. Like, for example, if you wanted to let your relaxer watch YouTube and you go on and your computer's crashed and you can't go online, then obviously it's not the season to allow YouTube view. Yeah. Yeah, I have noticed that I've been able to do that at times where things would just work out a certain way where an opportunity would arise for a certain subpersonality to be able to become active for for just because some circumstance arise. Yeah. That's awesome. I know I missed a little bit. Um, I'm just curious, now that your soul made a choice about how you're gonna spend your day, how are the parts of you feeling that w had different things they wanted to do? And how does the, and also the follow-up question is, how does the relaxer feel about getting left out? Oh, well, I'll probably have some time for the relaxer too. Oh, good. Well, if, if your soul wants to um, give your relaxer some time, go ahead and do that part now. I is the soul seem to have forgotten about the relaxer, but after I do those other things that um, that I'm allowed the manager and the philosopher and the poet to do 
I'll still have time for the relaxer too. Perfect. What a great way to cap off all that productivity is to, to let yourself relax. Yeah. Great. So how do you guys feel? Uh, relaxer, poet, manager, philosopher. Or another thing I was wondering was... Conversationalist. Like I was doing kind of eternal with the different sub-personalities. But I found at times, like, how do I talk about them in the sense that do I say we? Do I use I for each individual one? Yeah. Or if it's just, like, some kind of more trivial thing, like, do I always have to know who's doing what? Great question. So when you're speaking from one part, you say I. When you're speaking from a group of parts, like if the philosopher and the poet are speaking a collective voice, you say you can say we. We really, you know, both feel the same way. As long as you're not speaking for another part and acting like it's okay when the other part doesn't really feel that way, you let it, you let it have its own position. Um, so yeah, you kind of switch between the I and the we on that basis. And then, um, do you have to know what's going on all the time? No, uh, it's about increasing your awareness and you take time throughout your day to, to do these exercises, right? And what happens if you do that is you, you start becoming more aware of your parts and you'll start noticing it more throughout the day. But here's a good analogy. That I've, uh, that I've taken from one of my professors that I thought was really apt for, for parts work, even though he was using it to address something else. Why do we do this kind of work? Why, why would we bother with taking the parts of who we are and understanding them and looking at it from all these different angles? One way to look at it is it's like taking a fish out of water. You pull that fish up and you look at it from all these different angles and you really um, just appreciate it. You, you work with it and then you put the fish back in water and it swims better. In other words, when we reflect on ourselves, it's not that when we're going about our day-to-day -day work, we're constantly thinking about it. We're not constantly thinking, right now I'm the challenger, right now I'm the poet. Uh, those things happen, but more importantly is that we navigate life in a more harmonious way because we took the time and the energy to become conscious of who we are. And so yes, we'll be more aware of the parts throughout the day, but that doesn't mean we have to be thinking about it all the time. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, so okay, so um, we being everyone except the manager are quite happy with um, the amount of time that we've been allotted to do what we want to do by the soul. Great. But I, as the manager, feel like I need more time to um, work on scheduling my time in the future. So ask the soul, soul, can I have more time to work on scheduling? So I would like some more time for scheduling. Be the soul and respond. I, the soul, would like to give the manager some additional time for scheduling. Speak to the manager. I'd like to give you some more time for scheduling. Okay. Manager, I would like to give you some more time for scheduling but it will be not, perhaps not all the time you want, but 
more than I originally thought I would give you. Great. Manager, are you okay with that? Is that something, do you agree to that? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Fantastic. That's, that's negotiating. That's how we, we make agreements between parts of who we are. So you can negotiate from a part to your soul, or you can negotiate between different parts. You can actually let the manager and the poet talk to each other if you want. As long as the soul is sitting in the background, regulating and, and um, balancing so that the soul always has the final word. The soul makes the final choices. The, the buck stops with the soul. That's the important piece. So check in with your whole self right now, Nolan, your, your soul and all your parts. How does it feel to have done that exercise about how you're going to spend your time? Um, feels a lot better than before, but I also noticed that there's some parts of me that I guess kind of think all this sub personality is kind of stupid. Okay, what part of you said that? Uh, I would say probably the old man. Okay, be the old man. I'm the old man, and I think this is a bunch of bullshit. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> uh, I don't know that think this subpersonality stuff is ridiculous and just makes me cringe and I don't want anything to do with it. Okay, now be the soul and respond. Old man, I acknowledge that you perhaps don't like this, but I think despite the awkwardness that it might create in you, from all that I've experienced, it can be helpful to a degree that you might not see at this point. Great. Now, old man, respond to that. It might be useful, but it still bothers me, and I'm rather skeptical about it. Okay. Soul, keep going. Give him another response. Old man, it's okay to be skeptical, but it might be worth waiting for a while and seeing how things go. Okay, great. Now, soul, I'm going to talk to you soul to soul. You're doing fantastic. However, the, here's the next step. Don't ever ask a part of you for permission or wait for them to say it's okay. So this is the, this is the next step that you bring it to. Old man, I really hear you that it's uncomfortable, and this is what we're doing. This is what I'm ch choosing as the soul. Old man, um, I've acknowledged your point of view, but we're still going to do what I said we're going to do, and that's what's going to happen. Great. Now, old man, what do you think about that? Respond to the soul. I guess I'll go along with it and see how things go. My joker is coming up. You realize you don't have a choice because <laughs> the soul decided to do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, in my black hole, my black hole is saying, man, why does the soul always have to beat up on us self-sabotaging parts and tell us what we can and cannot do? Why can't he just let us beat up on ourselves? Oh, man, poor me. So I'm relating to you. Go ahead, Merck. I see you want to speak. Thanks for letting me hog up so much airtime. No, I loved that. And um, oh, how do I put this? Okay, Nolan's old man was quite polite. Um, and so to anyone else sort of watching this, and they're trying to do this on their own. Yeah, so I'm just going to share like how parts work has gone with me sometimes. So that people know it's okay if that's what happens. Um, 
but I have sub personalities that when the soul says something to them, their response is, especially at certain times, has been "fuck you, fuck all of this. I am dragging us all to hell. I am burning you the fuck down." So like. <laughs> If someone was listening to Nolan's old man and then tries to do part work and hit something like that, they might feel horrible about themselves. It's fine if that's what's in there. Also, I've been shocked just lately. Um, the past breakdown I had, some of these sub-personalities have just really learned to get along with the soul in a different way. Um, mm. Where there's still that same sort of you know, the harbinger of all the gods of chaos is still trying to, like, let the ancient ones through, but it used to be coming in with all fuck you, and it comes in, like, politely now, and almost old-timey declares an engagement of trying to take the throne, and just yes. is getting along with us, uh, the rest of us, in a very bizarre, like, improved way. yes. That's a really important point, Merck. What will happen as people do this work is that parts will realize that they can't come in unannounced without asking the soul for permission. They don't get to just sneak through the back door and self-sabotage or take energy or run the show. They actually have to run things through a deeper sense of connection. And so once they realize this is the new program, they'll actually start announcing themselves in and being more transparent without trying to conceal and create deception so that they can get their way and other their their needs met in other ways so i think that's a really important point point. and the other thing Merck, is the the guide and the facilitator in me wants to know what part of you wanted to make sure that everybody knew that it's okay if you have more um if you get more upset than that uh i suppose it's like the um I don't have a name for this one yet. Uh, it's like the tribal leader of the mad folk, the sub-personality of me that identifies with everyone else with mental illness. Um, so yeah, it's like the tribal leader of the mad folk. Nice. Well, the, the caregiver in me could really resonate with what you said because I don't want anyone to get left behind either. And uh, so the caregiver in me was right on board with what you said about getting uh, that whatever experience the part has is okay. And I'm not here just for people with mental illnesses. Like I'm not just here for the lunatics. That's just one of my specialties. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I'm here for anyone that thinks they can benefit from talking to a lunatic shaman for a while. Great. So Nolan, what are your, what are your concluding thoughts? I think what you said about the, um, the parts not being able to kind of uh, assert themselves kind of in the shadows, but be more transparent, um, something that I think would help me and um, gave me some, made me feel good about wanting to try being more involved with my sub personalities again. Awesome. Because I noticed that there's one part of me, it might be related to the old man, but it might be another part of me that I've noticed like when I wake up in the morning. I tend to feel quite negative about stuff. Like, wondering what the heck I'm doing. Although he would use a different word. Mm -hmm. But, like, that's the one thing that I've noticed has been difficult over the last while. Just, like, this feeling of what am I doing is kind of, I don't know if it's nihilistic, but what's the point of all this stuff? I would have rather just like stay sleeping and just 
that might be another part though that would just rather stay sleepy than not um, not wanting to worry about all this stuff or deal with not feeling well or questioning and then that kind of gets the self pity part of the man of the old man. Yes. Kind of activated. So it seems like there's perhaps another part of me that's more negative that that I don't at least notice as often. Yeah, that's that's a, another assignment you can do uh if if you're up for it to figure out what what if there's another part of you that's creating self-sabotage or feelings of depression and uh, self-shaming or whatever it would be or is it all just the old man so that's something for you to think about and let us know send us an email or a a, a message on discord because mercury and i would love to hear what you discover about yourself in that process it might be it might very well be a different part it could also be that the old man is doing that is waking up and creating uh, negative moods. So it's something to consider, but yeah, it's really important. What you said is running everything through the soul and making conscious choices. So catch it right away. Don't let it linger. Don't let it sit there and fester all day or for the whole morning or even for 20 minutes, sort it out. As soon as you wake up, meditate on it, do this exercise that we just did. Get the parts of you that you want as the soul active and work with the ones that are pushing up against you in that way. And that slowly but surely, you'll start to see huge changes in your psychology. It'll be, you know, just if you put in the work with this, you'll be impressed with how fast you, you can um, sort yourself out and, and live in your soul. It's really, it's really quite powerful. Yeah, I think I'll try to do that as well. Yes, and the other thing I want you to remember, Nolan, is that um, the soul lives in the moment. So the soul makes decisions for now, okay? But the soul also reserves the right to change in two hours. So it's about being adaptable. Don't get hung up on, oh, well, my plan was to do this. Yes, it's important to follow through on our commitments and to – um, you know, especially for the workhorse in me and the, the worker parts that we like to follow through and get things done. Absolutely. However, we also have to understand that the soul has the right to say, okay, uh, I'm reading the energy of myself. I'm feeling who I am. And in this moment, uh, this is what we're going to do. So go with your plan for now, for the afternoon, pull, pour your whole heart into it and listen to your soul uh, if you need to be flexible, if you need to adapt, if you need to change course, and be vigilant that it's not another part trying to come in and say, I'm the soul, um, now you need to do this instead. Because that's trickery. That's old. Maybe old man comes in and says, you don't really want to do this anymore, or whatever it is. Or, what you know, relaxer, or the relaxer is trying to relax, and the worker comes in and says, you're not supposed to relax right now. Always run it through the soul. Yeah. We have to live moment to moment. We have to make plans and we have to be adaptable. Yeah. And that's all I have, man. Thank you. It's really nice talking to you. And and Mercury, are there any things that you'd like to conclude with? Uh no, I'm good. Or maybe, yeah. Um like to the audience when this goes up, uh, join our discord. Uh, a lot of people are shut in at the moment. A lot. I think there's probably a lot of fresh sorters out there who haven't found the community and it's a great spot because Ryan's very busy and I think I'll be doing a lot more content and activities, um, over the next while if I'm able to, but I'm unreliable. I can have a breakdown at any point and disappear. But the uh, Discord community is building up. It's great to see people talking there. So, um, yeah, I'm sure Ryan will have a link for the Discord in the description. If you're new to coming across this channel, you're interested in this parts work or whatever form of sorting yourself out, uh, join the Discord. And it would great be great to see 
more people interacting with each other there. Um, yeah, a lot of lonely people out there and that problem solves itself when you get together in a group. Absolutely. Thanks, Nolan. Anything else you need to cover before we end the call? Um, not, not in particular. Uh, when Mercury mentioned like the Discord and stuff, I was just thinking it might be useful to maybe have some, I don't know, some sort of meeting where people can talk about like sorting out their sub personalities and I think that would be something that I'd be interested in if there's other or if there's other people who yeah I mean it's somewhat intimidating to kind of sort all this out and... yeah that's that that reminds me of the the watch party that Mercury hosted perhaps we can do a um, a sub personality Zoom where we can get as many people on as possible to talk talk about it, and then we can create a Discord channel that is just devoted to sub personalities, so that we have an ongoing little chat room as well. Is that what you would that be helpful, Nolan? Yeah, I think something like that could could help. Or uh, Ryan, let's yes. just. Let's talk about this later, but what he said, um, I think is great. And maybe we can brainstorm away. Cause yes, we're going to do our walk. Like I'm not taking away from anything you said, everything you said. Yes. And maybe we can find a way to get people going more, um, laterally, like for instance, maybe we could set up some sort of like the zoom call that will go up automatically once a week at a certain time for people where you and I aren't even there. Or there is the voice chat option, um, although I find that doesn't work well on my computer, so people can talk there. But yeah. yeah, maybe we can find a way to schedule sessions that don't involve us, but maybe we could help facilitate more group activities in the Sorting Myself Out community, even when we're busy. So that maybe, you know, Nolan or James or Gloff or someone can even, you know, put out their own ideas for meetings and host them themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I'll just add that if you make a donation it to everybody who watches us, it really, it really helps us continue to do this and cover our expenses. So consider making a donation. I know it's kind of precarious right now financially, but if, if any of you are in the position to, then we would appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, and I never say that on any of my streams or anything. I never ask people to donate. Um, and I do get everything's hard right now, but I guess I just want to say like Ryan's put more money into this channel than we've gotten in donations or ads. And uh, he's put a lot of work into it. So I would feel really good if we could just get the channel up to breaking even. Um, yeah. So we'd really, especially during hard times, we would appreciate it if anyone can donate any small amount. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But seriously, Nolan, it's, it's, always a pleasure talking with you and we really get a lot out of it. So thanks for, thanks for coming on. And I continue to admire your, your courage in the face of suffering and, and your creativity and, Oh God, your beautiful poetry. I really like your poetry, Nolan. I'm not, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. I really like it. And uh, it, I, I just even get a little teary saying that because it, it's so impactful and meaningful and, and, eloquent so please keep it up and uh, maybe if, if, if you're not too embarrassed I'd love to put a link to your website in our description yeah uh, that's fine um, thanks for saying that it uh, means a lot and yeah I'm always glad to be able to talk to you guys it's, it's always really helpful for me as well so yeah yeah, I love you, Nolan. And um, 
I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. I'll either host another watch party soon, or um, if as you're following up on this, uh, even if Ryan's busy, maybe we could do a follow up in a couple weeks on how this has been going. Because I think that it's not just like it's good for me and Ryan to talk to you because you're a good friend. It's obviously you know helpful for you, but the fact that you're sharing your journey with everyone, I think, is fantastic too, and can help a lot of other people. So. Thank you for being such an awesome active member of the community here.